Hello and welcome to Pharma Television News Review here at the 4th Midkind Symposium in Budapest in April 2016. On this show I have Professor Emeritus Mira Matsu and I also got Professor uh, Kedis Batsu, both from Nagoya University. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you both because you play a very important role in the discovery of Midkind. Uh, we're all here at the Midkind Symposium and it's because of your research at the very, in, the, in the early 80s or mid 80s that uh, you came across Midkind for the first time. So I'm going to talk, uh, turn to you, uh, and, and, uh, uh, Professor, and I'm going to ask you, what was the research that you were doing that led to the discovery of Midkind? Uh, we are interested to uh, know the mechanism of cell differentiation. So for that purpose, uh, we used uh, teratocalcinoma stem cells. Uh, actually, at that time, embryonic stem cells was just developed. So teratocalcinoma stem cell was a good system to analyze uh, cell differentiation. And we wish to have something important in cell differentiation. So uh, we went ahead and uh, Kenji did a very nice experiment. Okay. So what was that nice experiment that you did? <laughs> oh, actually, <laughs> yeah, we uh, utilize a, a method called differential hybridization, right. which uh, we prepare the uh, cell, uh, I mean, teratocalcinoma cells uh, before differentiation and also immediately after the uh, induction of differentiation. And then we just uh, subtract by that method uh, and then identify a gene which are differentially expressed. And then we found that uh, uh, the gene named midokine was uh, induced actually uh, during the differentiation. Right, okay. So it was a mixture of both looking at um, recombinant, do, doing recombinant DNA, molecular biology, as yeah. well as protein. Exactly. Um, biochemistry. Yes. Okay, so you, you, once, you've identi once you identified that gene and that protein, what was the next stage for the research? Uh, most important is uh, what uh, it is doing. Right. So we expressed it in culture cells and then extensively purified it. So purified protein uh, uh, promoted new right outgrowth right. Uh, very strongly and also rather unexpectedly, expectedly, uh, midkind enhanced the survival of uh, cultured neurons. So it has something, yeah. Yeah, so it, it clearly had a role both in the development, yeah. the early development yeah. in, in embryos, yeah. and particular in the area of neural neural cells, and and also uh, played an important role in uh, being a protectant, a protectant. Yes, yes. In 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 in, in, in that in that in, in, in that particular area. So, um, if I could turn to you, uh, Kenji, and, and describe what type of research did you, from that understanding of midkine, this new understanding of midkine. Which, where could you go with that research? Actually, uh, we are uh, more or less concentrated on the uh, neurons and also the cancers. Right. Uh, because uh, we uh, found that the, somehow mitokine was uh, strongly expressed various, uh, uh, in various uh, uh, cancers. Yes. And then so we are just curious about the role of the mitokine in the uh, oncogenesis. And also, as uh, Takashi said, uh, it has also a, a strong role in the uh, neurons. So we just uh, uh, did this kind of uh, experiment. Right. Yeah. Now, we'll come, out, come back to your specific research, but if I could come back to you, uh, Professor, and I'll ask you a question around the observation. We're here at this, this, this symposium, and there's a lot of research going on in Midkine. So, What's, what's your view now, having been at the beginning of discovering this particular molecule and now seeing its, its role? And it's, it's, it's involved in lots and lots of um, functions. What, what's, what's your view of, of Midkind today? Today, uh, it's still uh, road is in the middle. So uh, at, at first, uh, we did not expect such uh, 
broad uh, role of midkind. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm a biochemist, and from structural view, midkind has very unusual structure. So it itself appears to promise some important function, but uh, a real breakthrough to know the function of midkind is uh, we succeeded in producing knockout mice. So that um, yielded various phenotypes uh, related to disease. But then, now, of course, uh, real application in clinics is important. But for, so, for, from that view, road is still in the middle, and I expect much to come. Kenji, I suppose yes. the, 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 your current research, and you've been speaking at this conference, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're going back to its role in, uh, in neurobiology, um, and particular in, in axon regeneration. Yes. Uh, you've, you've had some interesting observations again. Yeah. So could you describe those observations? Yeah, actually our central nervous system axons cannot be regenerated after injury. Sure. And then uh, the one of the main reasons is uh, uh, emerging inhibitors. So, uh, but uh, we found that uh, somehow uh, first of all, we found the uh, underlying mechanism, and then somehow the one of the inhibitor uh, named uh, uh, conlutein sulfate. This is a, a glycan. Uh, somehow inhibit a very, I mean, uh, interesting uh, and uh, using the interesting mechanism inhibit the strongly the axon regrowth. And then uh, if we a midokine, uh, we apply midokine onto that uh, conlutein sulfate, we can uh, counter, midokine can counteract conlutein sulfate. So uh, probably midokine can uh, enhance the regeneration of axons. Yeah. And the implications of that research? Um, say for example, the spinal cord injury or a brain infarction, uh, we can apply this uh, molecule to rescue the patient. Right. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. So going back to your, your comments earlier about the structure of midkind yeah. and how it, it it's, uh, interacts with other receptors. So it, it's clear that midkind is, is very important. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. It has a very clear regulatory role. So with all of its various functions, I mean, obviously from from a research point of view, we want to understand, the, as you have just indicated, Kenji, about how it can work in a very specific context. But it's in each of these very specific contexts we've got to see how we can um, best um, um, uh, use midkine uh, to, from a therapeutic point of view. So, for, how would you exp how would you look if you look into the future? Where do you think midkine will have the biggest impact? Oh. Perhaps uh, I wish uh, uh, in cancer therapy, and for that purpose, of course, uh, antibody right. is very promising, and also the area uh, to be more seriously developed is low molecular weight compounds, right. because midkind has some strict structure. So some low molecular weight uh, uh, drug is invented or discovered that uh, disturb the function of midkind. Right. I wish uh, it become one of uh, a strong uh, bullet to uh, hit cancer. Right, indeed. So we, we're hitting, midkind is involved in, in cancer, it's a very yeah. important role in cancer, yeah. it has a very important role in, in, in the brain, and we've seen it both in brain tumors, we see it in its role in uh, regeneration, axon regeneration. Mm -hmm. So it's really quite a, an amazing molecule, and both of you I uh, worked on it 30 years ago and now we know more about it and I want to congratulate you both for doing this excellent research and I think everybody here at this conference and this symposium would like to thank you for doing that and I'd like to thank you as well. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.